Hey, everybody, this is Bo. We're back in the house again. Listen, guys, I wanted to say this again. Did you guys ever, ever, ever get a chance to see that IFL competition on Friday? Well, if you haven't, IFL rebroadcast on Channel 20 on my network, 20. Dude, I'm telling you, man, that Hidaki kid and that ma- opening matchup with Shade was probably one of the most intense and best style. It was like watching old school boxing plus the footwork and the grappling. Incredible. Side to side, side to side. Action, 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 action pack. It's a sign of well training. Now, as far as well training goes, we have Bernie Anderson in the house, the head coach of Northern Michigan University's football team. How are you doing today, Coach Anderson? Great. It's sunny and 75 up here, and we're enjoying it. <laughs> you get to rub You're it in. You're used to hearing about snowstorms, so we thought we'd let you know what the, what it is on a beautiful July day. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, we got miserable overcast skies, rain every day. Um, we haven't had much rain, so it's nice that we do get some type of rain. Um, now, Coach Anderson, now a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have this idea that coaches really in the off season play golf all the time. What is it like in the off season for a head football coach? Well, if you saw my golf game, you'd know that's not true. <laughs> uh, we do have a, a nice May and June part of July that, that you need to recharge the battery, and you do have free time. You come in the office, you get your fall stuff organization work done, you stay in contact with your players. We do have about 50-plus uh, players up here this summer that work out, so you see them a little bit. Uh, it, it is a time of catch-up. It is a time of organization. It is a time to recharge the batteries. Um, but when you start in August, you go for 14 weeks, consecutive seven days a week then you get into recruiting for two three months then you get into the off-season training and spring ball so you go nine to ten months at a pretty pretty rigorous rate and uh coming into the summer it does provide some time to get out as long as you don't take projects on like reciting a camp or building a garage or in my case both in one summer <laughs> yeah we always get those nice lists to do in our downtime when you're trying to figure out yeah. when's my downtime um coach yeah. now your background you've got um very successful background right now. Tell us where you've been and what brought you to Northern Michigan. Well, I'm from Ishpeming and wrestled and played football in high school there. Graduated, come to Northern Michigan on a wrestling scholarship. Spent four years here. Left, went back to Ishpeming, won a state championship in '79. Went to Three Lakes, Wisconsin, went to the state championship in our third year there with a 13 and one record. Now we just had a 25 year reunion for the 1982 football team this past Saturday. Uh, that was great. Left uh, Three Lakes, Wisconsin, went to Western Michigan under Jack Harbaugh for a year and a half. Uh, left there, went to Michigan Tech as an assistant for three years, and then was hired as the head coach for 19 years. Left Northern Michigan Tech for Northern Michigan. I've been at uh, Northern Michigan as a head coach now, entering our second season. Now, you were labeled by that school as the best coach they've ever had, wasn't it? Your previous? Well, at, at Michigan Tech? Yeah, you rebuilt the program. Well, we, we did some things that, uh, you know, over 19 years, you had to become the winningest coach in, in school history because you spent enough time there. But you, uh, you did other things. But, you though. know, that, that's, that's here nor there. The program was dropped in 2004. Uh, we did save the program with some great help from some alumni and got it back on its feet. We raised 400000 uh, to maintain the program for a couple of years. We went down and played in Ann Arbor in front of 51,000 people and held the biggest alumni event in school history. So there were some good things there. We won the conference championship, uh, got into the second round of the national playoff, hosted a hosted a, a home game uh, in the NCAA tournament for the first time in school history. So we had some good things happen to us in, in 2004. Uh, I guess they dropped in 03, and then we had the success in 04. Overcoming adversity creates opportunities, and and we had some good things happen to us. Guys, bottom line, what we're trying to say is that this is a very, very successful coach with a very, very good pedigree. Now, as you're entering into the season right now, you have got a lot of freshman players, a lot of high school players. What are some of the things that you look for or you try, you try to weed out from the players that come into the program? Well, I guess the, the big thing we look for right away in, in – starts to stand out and just their every action is their character you know their their work ethic their attitude the way they carry themselves the just the uh, their politeness uh, could be in the lunch line uh you know you look for that high character in 
integrity, honesty, loyalty, sincereness, work ethic, you know, those kind of things that are things you really don't coach. They're there or they're not there. And if they're not there, you're going to deal with some problem sooner or later. And, uh, you know, the, the on the field stuff is, is a little bit easier to evaluate. Um, but again, freshmen coming in, I think your question is, what are we looking for? And in our case, 34 freshmen coming in this year. And I think most importantly is just how we think they're going to develop over four or five years, not so much on the field, but off the field, because the off the field is going to be a good indication how fast they're going to come around on the field. In your position as head coach, you've seen a lot of things go on, and especially in the 19 years. When you look back on that, doesn't it feel great when the players come up and start saying, Coach, when you build things the right way, when they come over and understand what you did and, and why you did things a certain way? It, that's the hardest part about – I think that's the best part, part about being a coach is ex-players coming up and thanking you for what you put them through in those two-a-day practices. Well, I think you're exactly right. I think you hit it right on the head as far as, you know, the, the rewards are great when you win. When you lose, you have a, a very low, low. After 19-plus years, you know, you, you it's a little easier. You don't get quite so high with the wins. You don't get quite so low with the losses. And you understand it's human relationships. That's where, you know, the camaraderie within the sport of football because it's so unique in the battles and the physical and the injuries and the numbers and the teamwork and the chemistry and all the things that go that are so unique to the sport of football and are all part of all sports. But I guess football, I think, is a little bit unique. Uh, just that relationship with the players where you, you help take a young man and, and teach him how to overcome adversity and teach him how to mentally be strong and teach him how to send himself the right message at the right time in difficult times, not to say I can't do it, but that I can do it. And you know it's going to be a carryover in their life, and you would hope. It's not easy nowadays between jobs and 